As we conclude our discussion of thermodynamics, we come upon this quantity, the Gibbs free energy, which was developed by a fellow named Josiah Willard Gibbs and is a very, very important concept that will end up being quite useful for you as you work through thermodynamics problems and assess the likelihood of a reaction occurring. If you look for a formal definition of Gibbs free energy, it can often be difficult to find and might use a lot of long words or be described as the, quote, usefulness of a particular reaction. But I think the best way to look at Gibbs free energy is to think of it as the gold standard of whether a reaction will be spontaneous or not. If you have a negative change in the Gibbs free energy, then your reaction will be spontaneous. And this is more valuable than when people say that an exothermic reaction is spontaneous or that a reaction that increases entropy is spontaneous. The gold standard of whether something is spontaneous or not is whether it has a positive or negative delta G. And so when you're looking at factors that favor the spontaneity of some reaction, the best way to look at it is looking for the factors that encourage the change in Gibbs free energy to be negative. And so notice that if we have a negative delta H, we have an exothermic change in enthalpy of the reaction, then that will favor the spontaneity of this reaction. So a negative delta H, an exothermic reaction is something that favors spontaneity and makes a reaction more likely to occur. Similarly, because temperature is measured in Kelvin and will thus always be positive, anything with a positive change in entropy, a positive delta S of that system, meaning that the system becomes more disordered, that will favor a decrease in the Gibbs free energy because you're subtracting this term, we know this is positive, and so if the change in entropy is positive, then that also means that we're subtracting a positive number and we're pushing Gibbs more toward the negative side. So a positive delta S, a positive change in entropy of the system, an increase in disorder, which could mean going from liquid to gas or from solid to liquid or perhaps something that produces more moles of gas. These are all things that are favored because they increase the disorder and therefore you see an increase in entropy and that pushes Gibbs down more negative. Notice that if this term is very negative and this term is a little bit positive, it's okay. You can have an endothermic reaction, one with a positive delta H, that ends up having a negative change in Gibbs free energy and is thus spontaneous. So it's not that all endothermic reactions are not spontaneous and that all exothermic reactions are. It's that exothermicity, a negative delta H, encourages or favors the Gibbs free energy to be negative. And similarly, a positive change in entropy is something that encourages or favors a negative change in the Gibbs free energy. Now the last thing that you'll see is more often than not you do have reactions that increase entropy. That tends to be the trend that you see with a lot of the reactions that you encounter in your general chemistry exams. And when that is the case, when you do have a positive delta S, that means that increasing the temperature increases the likelihood that Gibbs goes negative. And so more often than not, and this is not a rule that applies all of the time, but more often than not, if you see an increase in temperature, then what is likely to happen is you're going to increase the likelihood of some reaction occurring spontaneously at that temperature. And so we'll put this in here with a little caveat that it's not always going to be the case depending on what's actually going on with your entropy. And you'll have to be able to look at a reaction and decide if it's becoming more or less disordered. But a general guideline is that more often than not, if you increase the temperature in which a reaction is occurring, it's more likely to occur spontaneously. And that's why you often find reactions occur better when you heat them up. And so that's the last thing. Don't take this as an absolute rule that uh, increase in temperature will always favor spontaneity. But in general, I think it's worthwhile to consider that exothermic reactions, reactions that see an increase in entropy, 
And in general, reactions with an increase in temperature, all of those favor a negative Gibbs free energy. And if the change in Gibbs is less than zero, that reaction will occur spontaneously. That is the rule with Gibbs free energy.